Good morning. There's fuzz on the mic. <laughs> I feel like I'm talking into a raccoon's tail. And considering we have a raccoon that's driving us crazy at home, I don't know, did somebody take care of it for me? Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here with you again. For those of you who don't know me, and even for those of you who do, my name is Ruth Ollie. It's good to see a few of you that we don't normally see. <laughs> Thank you for joining me this morning. <laughs> I gave a heads up telling him I'd be here, so I'm very pleased. Anyway, for this morning, <coughs> excuse me, I would like to share a video that Reverend Deborah has sent, just a little short one. So what are we going to sing? Jesus loves me, yes I know, for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, because they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. Happy Sunday! Happy Sunday! Bye! Bye! I like the accompaniment in the back, the barking. Let us light the Christ candle. Set our hearts on fire with love for you, O God, so that in its flame we may love you with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, and help us share this light of love with our neighbors, so that by keeping your commandments, we may glorify you. At this time, we honor the land where the, we gather and acknowledge that this region of Durham is part of the judiciary and treaty territory of the Mississauga of Scugog Island First Nation and the Mississauga Peoples and Treaty Territory of the Chippewa Island First Nation. We recognize and acknowledge the rich heritage of our indigenous sisters and brothers in the love of and stewardship to the land and all life upon it. Let us join in more voices, number 12, Come Touch Our Hearts, verse 2. Let us join in the call to worship. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh my God, in you I trust. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. You are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep God's covenant and decrees. Amen. Amen. Our opening hymn is from Voices United, number 104, We Have Come at Christ's Own Bidding.
Let us pray. O oh Lord, from the restless movement and quickened pace of our everyday lives, we draw aside to catch the rhythms of your peace. As the still small sounds of worship fill the high rooms of our souls, breaking gradually into rainbow-colored choruses of praise, shape, and mold us into godly people through your revelation in Jesus Christ. We ask this in his name. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, bless us, Lord, lead me home. My way grows drear, precious Lord, linger near. When my life is almost gone, hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home.
When the darkness appears and the light draws near and the day is past and gone at the river I stand guide my feet hold my hand take my hand precious Lord lead me home take my hand Precious Lord, lead me home. That was beautiful. Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Our first reading from this morning is from Deuteronomy. Ver, or chapter 30, verses 9 to 14. The reading is called The Doctrine of the Two Ways. If you've ever seen a superhero movie, then you know all about the doctrine of the two ways. You might not know that you know, but you do. It's the rule that says the good guys are always rewarded and the bad guys are punished. And it's at the heart of Deuteronomy. In Deuteronomy, being good means kicking idols to the curb and worshiping God. If you do what's right, God rewards you. Do the wrong thing and God's punishment will hit you harder and faster than a speeding bullet. <coughs> Lord, the Lord your God will make you abundantly prosperous in all your undertakings, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your livestock, in the fruit of your soil, for the Lord will again take delight in prospering you, just as the Lord delighted in prospering your ancestors. When you obey the Lord your God by observing the commandments and the decrees that are written in this book of the law, because you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Surely this commandment that I'm commanding you today is not too hard for you, nor is it too far away. It is not in heaven that you should say, who will go up to heaven for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. Neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who will cross to the other side of the sea for us and get it for us so that we may hear it and observe it. No, the word is very near to you. It is in your mouth and in your heart for you to observe. Our next reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. It's the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's a morality story told by Jesus about a traveler who was stripped of clothing, beaten, left half dead alongside the road. The Samaritan helps the injured man. Portraying a Samaritan in a positive light would have come as a shock to Jesus' audience. It's typical of his provocative speech in which conventional expectations are inserted or inverted. Some Christians, such as Augustine, have interpreted the parable allegorically, with the Samaritan representing Jesus Christ who saves the sin of the soulful. Others, however, discount this allegory and see the parable as exemplifying the examples and the ethics of Jesus. This parable has inspired paintings, sculpture, satire, poetry, and film. The phrase Good Samaritan means someone who helps a stranger, and many hospitals and charitable organizations are named after the Good Samaritan. A lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, 
you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he took him on his own animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. These are the teachings of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh God, open my lips so that I may proclaim your praise and open our ears so that we may hear of your loving grace. Amen. I was in Saskatchewan last week on business, Regina for two and a half days and Saskatoon for another day and a half. I rented a lovely Toyota Corolla to drive from Regina to Saskatoon, and I thought that would be absolutely great. I love to get behind the wheel of a car and drive. But then I got out to the car. It was red. It's my favorite color, but not in cars. Every, and I do mean every single red car I have owned, has been in an accident. Even the last one we bought, I convinced myself it should be okay. And when I showed up at the dealer, she said, what are you doing here? And I said, yeah, we got hit on the side of the road. The good part is none of them were my fault. Anyway, unless I was willing to pay for a 22-hour rental for an upgrade, which was already costing $230, I was stuck. So red it was. Now, I know I should have checked some of the features before I got on the road, but like new car owners, I was busy driving and looking at the dashboard, more than what was around me. And then I remembered that new car owners and car renters are so focused on their vehicles that they're blind to those around them. They're busy looking around at their surroundings without going too far beyond the dashboard. It's not intentional. It just happens. As with many parts of our lives, we become self-absorbed in our outer protective shell or car shell of our own lives. How many of you have heard that the land of, in Saskatchewan is flat? A few of you. Uh, if you don't lift up your eyes from what's in close proximity, however, you're not going to know. Today's story, the parable we know as the Good Samaritan, records a car shell story. The passage begins when a lawyer decides to test Jesus. Could it be that the lawyer, who should know the answer, wants to embarrass Jesus? Maybe he just wants to find out if Jesus is the real deal. Does the rabbi really have a deep knowledge that the crowd say he has? So he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Whatever the answer, the question is in his interest only. It's his car shell dashboard focus. Jesus, however, brings the lawyer out of focus by asking, what's written in the law? What do you read there? The lawyer answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your entire mind and love your neighbor as yourself. 
Jesus tells him that's right, and that if he follows these teachings, the lawyer will live. Saying that we love God is easy. Showing that we love God by loving neighbors requires that we step outside of our protective shell and look beyond our own dashboards to what's around us. So the lawyer asked, who is our neighbor? And here, Jesus tells us who we should consider as neighbors. So I'd like to update the Good Neighbor Sam parable without the violent attack by robbers and share a story by Dr. Amy Jill Levine, who's call, which is called, Who is My Neighbor? Who is My Neighbor? Written by Amy Jill Levine and Sandy Eisenberg Sasso. Illustrated by Denise Churu. Published by Flyaway Books in Louisville, Kentucky. Love your neighbor as you love yourself, and love the stranger because you know what it was like to be a stranger. Once there was a town where only blues lived. There were navy and indigo, aqua and sapphire, powder blue and midnight blue. They planted irises and forget-me-nots and feasted on blueberries and blue cheese. They sailed on blue waters. Blue jays perched on branches and brilliant blue cracker butterflies shimmered. The blues thought they were the coolest colors. The yellows lived in a different town. There were gold and bronze, lemon and mustard, canary and pale yellow. They planted sunflowers and daffodils and feasted on bananas and butterscotch pudding. They traveled on yellow brick roads. Goldfinches perched on branches and busy yellow jackets buzzed. The yellows thought they were the hottest colors. The blues and yellows did not like one another very much. Be careful of the yellows. We are better than they are. They are not our neighbors. They warned their children not to go near the others. Be careful of the blues. We are better than they are. They are not our neighbors. For years, the blues said there was no such thing as a good yellow. And the yellows said there was no such thing as a good blue. One day, Midnight Blue put on his best blue helmet and got on his blue bike. He loved cruising under the bright blue sky and passing by the tranquil blue lakes, singing a bluegrass tune. Then out of the blue, someone passed by so close to Midnight Blue that he lost his balance. Bump! Thump! Midnight Blue tumbled to the ground. His knees started to turn black and blue. Midnight Blue needed help. Along came Navy. Navy will help me, Midnight Blue thought. But Navy was afraid. She wondered. Maybe someone made Midnight Blue fall, and maybe that person is still around. So Navy pretended not to notice Midnight Blue. Midnight Blue was surprised. Why hadn't Navy stopped to help? After all, Navy was his neighbor. Along came Powder Blue. Powder Blue will help me, Midnight Blue thought. But Powder Blue wondered, did Midnight Blue get in a fight? Is the other person still around? He was afraid, so he pretended not to notice Midnight Blue. Midnight Blue was surprised. Why hadn't Powder Blue stopped either? After all, Powder Blue was his neighbor. Neither Navy nor Powder Blue is true blue. Along came Lemon. Oh no, a yellow, thought Midnight Blue. A yellow will only make things worse. Maybe this yellow will steal my books. 
But Midnight Blue wasn't the only one who was scared. Lemon worried about helping Blue. What if that Blue wanted to trick her? What if that Blue jumped up and took her bike? Maybe she should just hurry by. But Lemon didn't hurry by. She decided to help. She didn't steal his books. She picked them up. She lifted Midnight Blue from the dirt, handed him his helmet, and helped him get on the back of her bike. Then she took him to her doctor. While they waited, Lemon gave Midnight Blue a butterscotch cookie. It was broken, but still delicious. Midnight Blue said, You're a good yellow, not like the others. Most yellows are good, Lemon said. So are most blues, Midnight said. And he smiled. He pulled out a small bag of blueberries and gave some to Lemon. They were a little squished, but still yummy. When Dr. Gold came out, Midnight Blue was a little bit fri- still a little bit frightened. Dr. Gold was another yellow. But Dr. Gold smiled at him. She shined a light into his eyes, checked to make sure nothing was broken, and put a bandage on each knee. Good as gold. Midnight Blue turned to Lemon and said, Thank you for helping me. I would like to be your friend. Lemon nodded. Of course, a good friend. When Midnight Blue returned to his town, he told all the Blues what had happened. It was not at all what they expected to hear. He said, Lemon did not pass by. Lemon did not look the other way. Lemon helped. And Dr. Gold did, too. The Blues thought, The yellows do not look like us or eat the same foods. But maybe the yellows can be our friend. When Lemon returned to her town, she told all the yellows what had happened. It was not at all what they expected to hear. She said, Midnight Blue wasn't mean at all. He was thankful. He shared his blueberries. So sweet. From now on, we're going to be friends. The yellows thought, The blues do not know our songs or grow our plants. But maybe we can help the blues. And the blues can help us. From that time on, the blues and the yellows began to say, maybe we don't have to look alike or even live nearby. Perhaps we will like hearing new songs and tasting new foods. We might like making new friends. Maybe we can all help one another. Maybe, said Midnight Blue. Lemon smiled. Maybe, just maybe.